So, uh, John Cafferty, uh, the music career, how's it going? It's going pretty well. I, I uh, you know, I, I never imagined that, uh, that, uh, that a rock and roll career would last this long, but it's been, it's been uh, 40 years down the road doing this, so it's uh, pretty good. The phone keeps ringing, and uh, I'm happy to answer it. Now, also, you're playing with Rock and Pop Masters. How is that, uh, you know, with the tours? Well, you know, with the guys at Rock and Pop Masters, it's, it's a lot of fun because, you know, uh, it's, it's a lot of artists from, like, the 70s and 80s, and, uh, you know, we've all sort of run parallel roads over the years, probably played a lot of the same places, knew a lot of the same people, but, uh, you know, didn't really have a chance to get to know one another as... Uh, you know, just because, you know, one guy be playing on Thursday night, the next guy be playing on Friday night, the next guy be playing on Saturday night. And uh, we all had our own bands and uh, sort of traveled in our own little worlds. But uh, it's great to be able to get together with the guys and, you know, share the stage and, and sort of be in the same band. It's kind of fun. Do you keep busy with recordings and all that also? You know, over, over the last... Uh, 10 years or so I haven't really been recording I mean I, you know I have material but uh, don't have a record deal right now um, and you know our our, our stuff is, is still being played on you know a bunch of different sort of classic rock formats uh, you know across the radio dial and by the just by the nature of that I mean they're sort of looking for uh, they're not really looking for new material from us. They're looking for, you know, the, the songs that they're familiar with. But, uh, you know, I mean, we still play quite a bit. You know, John Caffrey and the Beaver Brown Band still got three of the original guys, and uh, we still play quite a bit all over, uh, just really all over America. Would you say uh, now with the Internet it's um, grabbing new attention at all? I'm, I'm sort of an old school guy. I'm not not really, uh, you know, very well connected into uh, into like the high tech world. You know, I'm, I come from more of the, the school of uh, you put the band up up on a stage and you count the floor and rock the house. You know, it's like. Uh, but you know, I, I guess you know through Facebook and websites and all that stuff. I guess there's an outreach to people who. Uh, you know, wouldn't ordinarily, uh, you know, come in contact with you. But, you know, we, you know, we built our following the old-fashioned way, just, you know, going from town to town and, uh, you know, playing shows. If there's a lot of people that don't realize, you know, you, you've um, appeared, you know, as Eddie and the Cruisers, the album and all that. What do you think of that, you know, today? You know, is there still following, following that product? funny you know because we, we uh you know we were uh we were a band for almost 12 years playing in the in the in the clubs up and down uh you know the, the northeast corridor in, in uh in the states and um you know we were pretty popular um you know all the way from maine down to maryland there's a lot of major cities in between so we had a pretty big following uh when we got a chance to do that film eddie and the cruisers uh you know it reached out to a wider audience than we were able to reach ourselves and uh you know having it uh be a multimedia sort of uh project where it was uh it was not only on the radio but it was on cable tv it was in the movie theaters um it it uh it was it, it was pretty successful for us it went what three times platinum i think yeah, yeah, it sold over three million records. That's a uh, quite a feat. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to believe that that happened. It's like you know, and it happened so quickly. Uh, we, you know, we we uh, we we made the made the film, made the soundtrack album. Uh, thing came out, came out, was out in theaters. You know. And the album was released. Nothing really ha happened to it until they played it on TV. When they played it on television, 
you know, kids were watching uh, cable TV, which at the time, in the early 80s, cable television was sort of a novelty. Then it was everyone was new to it. And, uh, you know, they would put a, a, a movie on and people would watch it, like, you know, 10 times. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, people started calling radio stations and buying albums. I mean, the, the, when they put it on television, I mean, it, it sold like uh, like a million albums in, in like a month. Another thing, too, you know, that uh, sold a lot of copies is Rocky IV soundtrack, which, which you appear on. That's another incredible... Uh platinum selling various artists yeah it was, it was great i got a call one day uh you know saying that uh sly stallone wanted me to sing a song in 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 uh in 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 rocky rocky four so i i happened to be out on the west coast at the time and i i drove down to the studio and there he was and you know they played me this song uh, hearts on fire and I was hearing it for the first time, and I just listened to it. And he asked me to go in and sing it because he wanted me to hear what it sounded like. So, uh, you know, I gave it my best shot, and it ended up on that Rocky soundtrack. I mean, that sold almost three million records as well. But that that record had, uh, you know, Jimmy Jameson with Survivor. They had a number one song with Burning Heart. Uh, James Brown had Living in America. On that record, uh, this guy Robert Tepper had a top ten single on there called No Easy Way Out. And uh, so it, it was great to be a part of that. People that write music, it's not as um, tight, you know, and written like the 1980s, let's say. Because, I mean, the structures were a little bit different back then. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm so, I sort of grew up in the, in the 50s and the 60s. You know, that, that was sort of the music that... That shaped my background. I mean, that's the music that inspired me to want to pick up a guitar and be a musician. So, a, a lot of the music, you know, that that we write, well, has those sort of influences and those sort of chord changes and, you know, lyrically those kind of hooks and, and uh, you know, so I mean that that, that you know I I have come from also a, a blues background. You know, I grew up playing in blues bands before I, I, I uh, started, to, you know, singing in more pop-oriented bands. So we have sort of a, you know, simple base of what we do. And, uh, you know, all the guys in my band are very good at improv. You know, they're very good players. And they, they can all, you know, solo pretty well. Are you going to have another well, album in the future? Well, that would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it would be. <laughs> uh, it, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, we, you know, I, I, I think in this day and age, it, it, it's almost, uh, it's almost going back to like what it was in, in the, in the, fifties and the early sixties, where, where uh, individual songs are, you know, because of the iTunes and the internet and the right. way that people buy music people are attracted more to individual songs than to uh you know albums as a whole and you know there was a period of time where we you know when you would put together an album so we had an album called tough all over an album called roadhouse that we put together and they were sort of pieces like all the pieces every song sort of fit with the next song and uh, you know they were sort of interconnected, but now I think it's more individual stuff. So it, it's it's hard to say what uh, what the future holds in store for us. In that sense, it's going back like to like singles and stuff when the Beatles made singles, Rolling Stones, you know, even Elvis oh, Presley. Oh man, when I was when I was a little kid, you know, uh, you know, I was like, you know, my my mom would go to the store grocery shop and go buy food. And at the cash register, they had 45s. They would have a wall with, like, you know, the top 20 45s hanging up on the wall. And, you know, in those days, it was, uh, you know, Elvis Presley and the Everly Brothers and, you know, people like that. And I, I used to, you know, if I was, if I didn't ask for candy or potato chips or whatever, my mother would let me buy a single. And, uh, you know, I used to buy all my Elvis <laughs> songs that way. 
too bad it doesn't go back like that. Go on vinyl and have them like you're just uh, talking about. That would be awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, I I, I think, uh, you know, for the most part, I mean, you know, you know, pe- people, uh, people listen to music and, you know, it, it, it's very uplifting to them, you know, it, 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 uh, including including us who are musicians. You're a musician. I'm a musician. I mean, the, the you know the way that that music makes you feel when you hear it. You know, it's sort of it's 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 uplifting. It sort of just sort of makes you feel better. And you know, for the most part, I mean, people you know who are not musicians, you know, music is entertainment to them, and they don't get as as crazy about it as maybe you and I would. Right. But. Uh, yeah, it's entertainment, and somehow you have to be able to, you know, make music that that's uplifting to people. You know, you, you when when you're when you're playing for an audience, I mean, they don't you're not playing for musicians. I mean, they don't necessarily understand that you're playing a pentatonic scale, you know, on the guitar when you're doing your solo, but they do understand what they feel like when they hear you play it. You know. And you know that that's ultimately what it, what's, what it has to do. The music has to sort of communicate with people on a on a human level, on a heart to heart level. You have to you have to be able to play music and create music that's that sort of you know that gets through you know all the barriers and and just you know makes people feel a certain way. And another thing too, with you, are you writing any songs at all in the past few years? Yeah, you know, I, I always come up with a couple here and there. You know, I, I, you know, I have my career has, for the most part, been, uh, you know, predominantly as a live performer. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I started out doing when I was 13 years old. You know, I'm like 59 now, and it's like, I mean, I've had more experience being a live performer than a than a recording musician. Um, so, you know, usually when I write songs, I, I sort of write songs to play, you know, at the shows. I write songs that have, uh, you know, uh, you know, if I need a certain kind of song in the show, then, then like, I'll try to come up with something. You know, okay, yeah. A song that's going to make people dance, or I need a slow song, or I need, uh, you know, a song that's going to create a certain mood. You know, like uh, I'll, I'll try to come up with something that that I know that I can use. But you know that that's just that's just me. You know, I always try to write songs that have some sort of purpose to them. And with these songs, do they get released somehow online? Uh, you know, I I I need to talk to the RPM guys about that. Cause <laughs> some of those guys, they they really know. You know how to how to work the internet. I you know I don't really know how to do it to to get it all out there. But you know, I mean Larry Hoffman from Orleans and Jolyn Turner from you know Rainbow and Deep Purple. I mean those guys are pretty they're pretty hip to all you know how all of that works. Because John, if you're if you're writing songs and we're not hearing them, you know, we got to hear them. All right, well I appreciate that. It's not everybody that can uh, travel the world to go to see your play, you know. Uh, the yeah, world's know. a big place. I know, I know. Well, we'll have to get some more stuff out there. Well, excellent stuff. Uh, John, uh, pleasure talking to you, and uh, hope all is well. Same here, same here. How about yourself? Are you, you out there playing? Uh, right now, the economy is so bad that, you know, it's not. we're not playing too much, so no. Yeah, I read a little bit about you. I heard you're a really good guitar player. What, what do you go for a guitar? I uh, play Gibson Explorer and Gibson Les Paul, and uh, I got a few oh, strats. I got a couple of old ones myself. I got a couple of, you know, I got an old Les Paul and an old Strat. Uh, you know, kind of old, you know, 60s stuff, but yeah, that's a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun. I, my little, uh, 11 year old he's a piano player and you know i just got him his first stratocaster and so picking up uh guitar and uh yeah he's you know he's he's sort of following along better ear than i do though he's he's, he's got a really good ear
you know, every, every every winter, you know, I look at that phone and wonder wonder if it's ever going to ring again, you know, but uh, somehow it does. And, uh, you know, still get a few gigs here and there, and you go out there and you just uh, – you just uh, do 100% every night, and hopefully there's somebody there that sees you that gives you another job, you know? Yeah. And that, that's uh, that's what my career has been like.